Okay, yeah, climate safety blog. So, uh, mo- a lot of my job these days is uh, communicating climate science. So, I find that I'm often navigating the axes of uh, this graph. Okay. Now today I only have 20 minutes, so I don't have to worry too much about trying to hit the sweet spot around here and not sending you up this end of the curve. So we're just going to take a very brief little journey down this little roller coaster ride here. Okay? I hope we're going to take that journey together. So now, as someone who communicates climate science, I should show you lots of graphs, basically. Graphs with things going up. More graphs of things going up. Some terrifying graphs where everything goes up. Yeah, exponential times. Graphs with things going down and then going up again and then going down again. Graphs with heating things. Graphs with cooling things. Graphs about the past. Graphs about the future. There's some uh, simple but boring things. There are complex but really interesting things. I wish I could talk you through that one. There are maps, exciting maps, with oceans and currents on them. And there are maps with things melting. And there's angry red temperature maps. Yeah. Four degrees of average global warming, it doesn't just mean everywhere gets four degrees warmer. The land gets warmer, and particularly in certain months, lots of areas get far, far warmer. The dark red there is between five and 12 degrees warmer on average in July, by the end of the century. I'm also probably supposed to show you lots of uh, terrifying photos about the dramatic impacts of climate change. Hurricanes, floods, another flood that looks a bit cuter. There's a road closed there, so I don't know what, how Clarkson will get home. Droughts, wildfires, uh, heat waves. I think that's actually fog, but but I don't, have that, I don't have enough time. I've probably only got 17 minutes left, so I'm just going to talk to you about two things. I'm going to talk to you about Ar- the Arctic and, and risk, okay? So if we just take a 10-second risk example, most people don't play Russian roulette because there's a one in six chance of dying, okay? That's pretty big to most people. Now, the problem is that the best deal that we could get at Copenhagen, the UN climate negotiations in December this year, the best deal that we could get gives us a 50% chance of avoiding two degrees of warming, which is sort of commonly politically described as the, the limit beyond which we don't want to go, beyond which the damages get, just get far too, far too severe. Although there'll still be major damages in the developing world with two degrees, enormous. And new evidence suggests from the, from the British Committee on Climate Change that actually it's probably more like a 65, 70% chance. So it's more like four bullets. And I would argue that if, if these climate models that we're using don't include lots of the feedbacks, including things the Arctic melting early and some other things, then it's possibly more like a 5 and 6% chance. So we've got some big things to think about there. We're going to need to do more, basically. So I have a complaint to make. <laughs> And my complaint is that, in my opinion, the wider design community have been very slow to engage with climate change. But I don't think they're alone. I think all sorts of groups have been slow to engage with it. I think it's been labelled as an environmental issue, so we leave it to environmentalists. I think it's a, it's a social issue that has profound implica- implications on health, human rights, security, social justice, development. And that's starting to change now. So doctors, physicians, health experts are starting to engage with it. Development groups are starting to engage with it the military are starting to engage with it in terms of a risk-based problem. So I think now is a very good time for the design community to start engaging with it more. There are obviously pioneers, there are people like Jody and, and people involved in Ecolabs who have already started and lots of others, but I think this is really the issue or one of the major issues to be working on now. So what can we do? Well, uh, today's a really good start. I'm really excited to hear your ideas and what, what things you think about today, uh, projects that you'd like to propose project ideas, okay? You can, I'll put my email on at the end. 
Uh, and I have a complaint, so I should offer some sort of remedy to that complaint. So I'm willing to offer, uh, at the end of November, start of December, a two-day weekend workshop where me and you get to go through all the climate science and have lots of time to, dis time to discuss it and think about how to communicate it, basically. Okay? That's my job. I'm sort of a pseudo-designer, not a real one. But I need your help. And the scientists need your help. The scientists are running around. They're running into all sorts of areas that they not necessarily qualify to run into because they're really concerned and so working on this is I would argue one of the most important things you could be working on so I'd like to end with stealing something really horrific from Paul Hawking and I'm going to pretend it's mine um, it's that really civilization needs a new operating system now it needs a whole new thing it's not going to invent itself though and we are the designers and developers who can make that but we don't have much time so let's get going. Thank you.